Captain Samuel Boyce, and I'm the officer commanding Acting Special Operations Company, located at Paragon Base. Special Operations Company is part of the Barbados Regiment. And the regiment consists of a number of companies, and Special Operations is one of those companies. This company is what you call the elite arm of the Barbados Defense Force. Elite from the point of view of um, there are a number of operations that we do at Special Operations. They actually have a breakdown for you that the other companies wouldn't be involved in. Um, just to stray a bit, the other companies, one of the other companies deal with the engineering side of it. So if there is um, anything to do with construction or anything, they deal with that. We, on the other end now, Special Operations Company, we deal with any operations assisting the Barbados Police Service in operations. We have been doing that now for over 20 years, right? And Special Operations Company, if I can go back a bit, it was formerly Commando Squadron. And before that, then it was Support Squadron. The doctrine, the way how we operate, the way we train, the way we conduct operations does not change. What has changed is the name. This company also, um, the younger is what you call, is like a nursery. A nursery from the point of view of, um, and, I, and I'm gonna relate it to a plant nursery, right? So the younger guys that come into the Barbados Defense Force, that is their, that's the ground where they start. So they develop a special operations company and they spend at least three to five years with any company. And as they develop, then they move and branch out within the Barbados Defense Force, right? While they are there, there are a number of weapon systems, maneuvers. Um, we also disaster training, all these different things. There's a combination. So let's say the let's say the president of Barbados, who's the commander in chief of the Barbados Defense Force, was to summon us for any operation. We got to be ready, and we are ready. Um, recently, we had um, recruiting um, recruits pass out within the Barbados Defense Force. So the majority of those recruits are at Par uh, Paragon Base now, which is part of Special Operations Company. So what we do, we train, we mold, we groom, we discipline, teach you how to run expertly, show for the basic military skills what we do, we change these basic military skills into competencies, right? So that's basically what we do at Special Operations Company. Special Operations Company is very important as the elite arm of the Barbados Defense Force from the point of view of the training they do, one, and the training they do is more arduous, more aggressive than what would normally happen with the other members of the force, okay? Another thing, in terms of disaster. Special Operations Company, again, is launched into any disaster situation. Now, recently, we had a situation overseas in Dominica, where we went there. Um, and then there were some other ones before that, okay? Now, what I mentioned before that is like a nursery, nursery from the point of view where we, we change it out all the time. So regardless of who comes into Special Operations Company, who commands the company, who was part of it, the doctrine is still the same, right? In terms of um, parades, that is what you call our bread and butter. Once, there, once parade is on, we are part of it, and we always form part of that Guard of Honor when it comes to any dignitaries coming into the island, Independence Parade, anniversary, we are always out front Special operations come. Now you may not recognize us because we all dress the same as the other persons with any force. But once there's any form of operation, let's say VIP escort, ammunition escort, these are the kind of operations that we do. What we do presently, this is during the the this is morning starting basically about eight o'clock on morning, it's up to about um, 1600 on afternoons, four o'clock. 
um, they assist the Royal Barbados Police Force from the point of view of um, the Operation Guardian. What Guardian does? Look after the tourists. Well, we can't be every place. So that's why we operate in a patrol type of format, touching basically a number of beaches, resorts, hotels, those areas to make sure that the tourists coming to Barbados operate within a safe condition. Also, before my, before, there's another operation as well, which basically fall under the name of Broadsword, and this is one that we conduct basically after hours at night. And this is, um, this is a more aggressive patrol where we have to interact with basically the bad boys and whatever the case may be. And then there's another operation, which is later at night as well, still assisting the Barbados Police Service, basically fall under the operation of Scarecrow, right? Which is fall under pretty larcenary, right? Looking after crops and, and certain things within Barbados. So it's a kind of 24 operation within Special Operations Company. So once you finish at a particular time with one operation, then the next. Obviously, the guys would change out. Different persons would do that. And also, within the, oper the late operations at night, you find that some of these guys would come back in basically and that would go straight to the morning, come back in, right? So this is nothing that the other members of the force would normally do. Hence, Special Operations Company. Let me begin preparations. It's hurricane season. Baby, sit down and reason. Baby, secure the nation. Grow your shelters, Bajan. Help out one another, get liberation. Develop emergency community plans so that we could function. Remove outdoor objects. Make sure that you went to the ATM. Stack up with water. Make sure you clean the gutter in. What about ten food? Make sure you got some stock up in your room. Make sure you prop up the pail and tie down the roof. Let me start to prepare real soon. Let me begin preparations. It's hurricane season. Let me sit down and reason. Let me secure the nation. Grow your shelters, Bajan. Help out one another, get liberation. Develop emergency community plans so that we could function. I am Captain Ashton Caddell. I am currently the officer commanding the support company of the Barbados Regiment. A combat support service company provides administrative logistical support to support the units while they're conducting their training on operations within the military. Primarily, there are fundamental tasks include, involved in combat service support. These are mainly categorized into three categories. Those are personnel support, logistical support, and health care support. The personnel support involves supplying men and women to the command elements and the various units to conduct their task. The logistical support includes things like fixing, fueling, and health care. So transportation, maintenance of the transport assets, um, feeding, and health care. The health care element, their role and responsibility is to ensure the medical care of the, the troops so that they're, they're fit to fight. All right, so we take care of preventative, med preventative medicine um, physiotherapy, um, pharmaceuticals, dental care, all those medical requirements that are required to ensure that soldiers are fit, fit to perform their role. So the support company is the, the vital component of the BDF. We, in essence, and to, to coin a phrase from Sang Su, who's a Chinese general, the 
the fine line between disorder and order lies in logistics. So all that says is that in order for the, the fighting elements to be able to carry out their mandates, they have to be sustained. And that's where the support company comes in. So our five departments, um, they are the, the company headquarters, the transportation, the catering, the communications signals in particular, and the, the, medical, the medical unit. So the company headquarters really wants to administer all the personnel, we account for them. The transportation divided into two parts. They're the ones who are responsible for moving the troops, moving supplies, moving men, moving ammunition, all resources to sustain the troops. They're divided into two parts. The transportation, the drivers, all classes of vehicles, they drive and the, the light aid department. They're the ones who fix the vehicles. So they maintain them, ensure that they're, they're running for the troops to be able to be transported. All right, the communications are signals as a vital link because nothing happens without communication. So from ceremonial parades to national disasters where they have to man the radios at DEM, even originally with the the Caribbean Disaster Relief Unit, where they go overseas and man the radios for the unit. Okay, so signals is a vital link for everything. The healthcare department, like I said before, they're the ones who ensure that the soldiers are fit to fight. Catering, the army doesn't move unless it is fed. So the catering department divided into two branches, the cooks, and they're trained at the Hospitality Institute, the Barbers Community College, some of the finest cooks on the island, I should add. All right, and they ensure that soldiers are fed. All right, the, they also have a component, which is the messes department that has stewards and they provide bar service and wait service. Without the support company, the, the fighting arms, the units, they would not be able to achieve their mandate. All right, so once they're out on operations, we are the ones who sustain them. So without sustainment, they cannot continue the fight. So we provide all of their logistical support to ensure that they can carry out their task. We also have to ensure that our personnel are trained and maintain their basic military skills. Because in the event of a national emergency, those skilled professionals have to put down the pot spoon, the radios, the, the messing kit, and they have to take up the rifles and go in support and form a fighting, a fighting element as well. So that is how they, they are vital to the sustainment and to ensure that the, the Barbados Defense Force reaches and achieves all of its mandates as laid out by the government. Let me begin preparations. It's hurricane season. Let me sit down and reason. Let me secure the nation. Grow your shelters, Bajan. Help out one another, get liberation. Develop emergency community plans so that we could function. Remove outdoor objects. Make sure that you went to the ATM. Stack up with water. Make sure you clean the gutter in what about ten food? Make sure you got some stock up in your room. Make sure you prop up the pail and tie down the roof. Let me start to prepare real soon. Let me begin preparations. It's hurricane season. Let me sit down and reason. Let me secure the nation. Grow your shelters, Bajan. Help out one another, get liberation. Develop emergency community plans so that we could function. Captain Everton Branch, Officer Commanding the Engineering Company of the Barbados Regiment, based here at Sinan's Fort. The Engineering Company is responsible for all of the 
maintenance, building repairs uh, to all the buildings and structures across the Barbados Defence Force, both plant and structures across the Barbados Defence Force. We have a number of bases, um, Coast Guard, St. Anne's Fort, um, Cherry Tree Cottage, Main Guard, Park and Base, and also additional of the field medical facility in Newton. So the engineering company is responsible for ensuring that the maintenance of each of those built um, structures and bases are of a high standard and in the quality of life at all the bases are of a high standard as well. The day-to-day -day operations basically is we would render any assistance that would have come in via a request for repair, whether it be plumbing, um, carpentry, electrical, uh, basically touching any of the skill sets. But that can also range up to capital projects. Where, where we are standing right now, the officer's mess is considered a capital project, which we are responsible for the project management of that project and other various capital projects across the BDF. Well, with hurricane preparedness, um, this will be a regimental um, operation, not just engineering company, but being engineering company, being part of the regiment, we are prepared, we prepare for the hurricane season within five phases, right? There are five phases of operations that we go in. The first phase is basically our preparation and training. Where we are at right now, we are con continuing a lot of ongoing training um, for the hurricane season. This will be done both practically and over in the classrooms as well to, to bring the guys up to speed and to refresh those skills as well as to carry out checks you now when it comes to the equipment, to carry out checks on all the equipment, trucks, vehicles, everything that we will be required to use in the event that we are required to come out in the aftermath of a severe weather system. Phase two now is when we would actually go into which phase two is when we, we, we reach an advisory, where there's an advisory issued to the country that of where the system is likely to approach. Our phase there is basically to have all personnel contactable um, to ensure that we can contact every person who needs to be on base will be on base but it wouldn't be at that stage required to have a person on base only be in the to be contactable to know hey if something happens we need to get you here back in the shortest time frame possible phase three will be now if we receive a watch where is a watch now we are watching out to have a weather system that is likely to approach the island within 48 hours. At that stage now, all members of the Barbados Defence Force will be required to report back to their bases and be start to then put all of the tools, equipment and things in place. And there are certain procedures that we will take internally to prepare ourselves as on, on base because if we're going to go out to help people, you know, we need to be able to secure ourselves first. So we would go through all of those procedures, ensuring that our bases and everything that we would need is properly secured at that phase. Phase four now is the warning where now we know definitely that a weather system will approach the island within 24 hours. At that stage, we are here all buttoned down, at all the bases, uh, we are all buttoned down and just awaiting to the system to pass where we will then be kicked into action to assist any government agencies and the government of Barbados to ensure that we restore Barbados to a state of normalcy in the shortest time frame possible. Phase five being the final phase is actually the operational phase where we are deployed under the direction of these government agencies. Um, the EM usually takes control of that operation. So we will wait and we will take our instructions from DEM where they need us to go and what will they need us to do and then we will move out from there. So basically that will be the five phases that, that the Barbados Regiment, Barbados Defense Force would be employed in, in, um, in hurricane relief. Well, we are deployed, we have various teams. We have a number of route clearing teams. There are a number of all clears that many Barbadians will not know of, but the first all, when the first all clear is given, that is when we kick into action to go. We, we have a number of major arteries, we call them major arteries, which are major roads coming from the hospital and all the other emergency services, vehicles, fire service and stuff like that. We need to have those routes cleared so that those emergency vehicles can get to certain areas of persons that would require that medical assistance or that assistance from the fire service, whether it be search and rescue or medical. Um, once we have done that with the, with the route clearing Teams. And we're not only based here, we have a team that will be at St. Lucie, one at Paragon, one here at St. Anne's Fort, one at Coast Guard, that will move from various locations to clear those major arteries, to have those routes cleared. Um, after that, 
depending on what the government of Barbados and these agencies will require, we may even be seen going into operation of rendering assistance to persons, whether it be search and rescue, or even now at the stage where we had the full all clear, persons of assess sent in their reports to DEM um, of the damages, and then we will lend assistance in that area as well to assisting government agencies in the restructure of some homes across Barbados. With Hurricane Elsa, we would have gone through the phases one to five, as mentioned, and then in phase five, we would have rendered assistance to the rehabilitation of some homes, to, as I said, to bring Barbados and Barbadians to a state of normalcy as in the shortest time frame possible.